Fractography is well known in the field of metals, but fractography of plastics is a relatively new field. In fractography, we study fractured surfaces. When a material fractures, it produces characteristic features on the surface. The study of these characteristic features helps to determine the root cause of failure in that material. Fracture analysis of composites, reinforced plastics and plastics containing high filler content is very important as it can help to develop high quality product with better service life. In today's video, we will discuss common fracture modes which includes ductile, brittle and fatigue fracture. We will also discuss why and how the plastic material fails. What are the features that help to identify the type of fracture? And also, we will discuss role of microscopy in fracture analysis by case study. So, fracture is basically separation of a solid into two or more parts under application of load or stress. Depending on the type of load, fracture may be defined by tensile fracture, compressive fracture, shear fracture, fatigue fracture and creep fracture etc. However, these fractures are mainly characterized by either ductile or brittle fracture. The process of fracture mainly involves phenomena of crack initiation and crack propagation. Due to stress concentration or wire formation or inclusion, crack initiation takes place and it propagates depending on the nature of the material and amount of the stress applied, leaving some characteristic features corresponding to the particular type of failure. Ductile fracture undergo an appreciable plastic deformation before actually breaking apart. Plastic deformation is permanent deformation, whereas brittle fracture occurs with elastic deformation, which is non-permanent or temporary deformation. So, when force or stress is applied on a material, its shape or size changes due to the force. As we can see here in the schematic, this change is known as deformation. This force can be tensile, compressive, torsional or bending force. As deformation occurs, internal intermolecular force arises that oppose the applied force. If the applied force is large enough to resist the intermolecular force, the material undergo plastic deformation. And if the applied force is not large enough to overcome the intermolecular forces, then the material undergo elastic deformation. In elastic deformation, when force is applied, the material deform, but deformation disappears when the external force is removed and material returns to its original shape. It depends mainly on the chemical bonding of the material. The best example for elastic deformation come from elastomers such as elastic rubber. When we pull the rubber, it stretch. If we stop pulling it, it come back to its original size. This shows phenomena of elastic deformation. But when pulling force is very high, it breaks. It cannot go back to its original shape. This is known as plastic deformation. Plastic deformation is permanent deformation or change in shape of a solid material with or without fracture under action of force. Plastic deformation is irreversible and permanent. It occurs due to the breakage of limited number of chemical bonds between atoms that make up that material. If we look at stress strain curve, Elastic deformation occurs at very low strain value or at very low deformation. Whereas plastic deformation occurs at relatively high strain value. Therefore, brittle fracture that occurs with elastic deformation is characterized by low energy process and ductile fracture that undergoes plastic deformation is identified as high energy process. Ductile fracture requires much more energy compared to brittle fracture. 
So we can say that brittle and ductile failures are two extreme behavior of a material like black and white. But we should not forget that there are many shades of gray in between. So many polymeric condition can make a plastic material partially ductile and partially brittle. Therefore, most of the plastics show intermediate ductility unless they are deliberately made to be very ductile or very brittle. So, ductile material undergo plastic deformation which requires high energy. Therefore, material undergo necking before breaking. Whereas, moderately ductile material undergo little plastic deformation and then break in brittle manner. Brittle fracture is a low energy process. Therefore, material breaks at low stress without any plastic deformation. This gives shiny and smooth fracture surface. Brittle fracture occurs in two stages. First, initiation of crack and second, rapid propagation of the crack leading to complete fracture in catastrophic manner. A brittle crack often starts at a pre-existing defect such as void or inclusion. A crack can also initiate in a defect free material in a region of high stress concentration such as at the edge of the drilled hole or notch. Brittle fracture involves the sudden failure of material by rapid crack growth immediately after crack initiation. Therefore, brittle fracture is also called as fast fracture. Fully brittle fracture involves the rupture of interatomic bonds ahead to the crack as illustrated here in the schematic. This produces a fracture surface that is called the cleavage fracture. A cleavage crack grows between the atomic planes along a specific crystallographic direction that has the lowest atomic bond length. Brittle fracture is the worst type of failure because it is fast and shows no visible sign of damage or prior warning that the material will break. Brittle fracture can normally be identified by smoothness of the failed surface. The main reason of brittle fracture is stress concentration that is present in the structure of molded or manufactured product. Discontinuities that develop during molding or service can also initiate brittle fracture. The discontinuities can be in the form of notch, corner, holes, laps, folds, large inclusions, cracks, etc. All these leads to brittle failure. A stress concentration or stress razor is a location in a material where stress is concentrated. A material is stronger when force is evenly distributed over its area. So, a reduction in area for example ca caused by crack results in localized increase in stress. So, stress concentration is area in a material or sample where force is not evenly distributed and accumulates there. When force in that area become much larger than what material can withstand, it starts to crack. Stress concentration is the major factor that contributes to brittle fracture. Brittle fracture occurs due to the overloading. There is another type of brittle fracture that arises due to the cyclic loading or cyclic force. This is known as fatigue fracture. Fatigue fracture occurs due to alternating or cycling loading. These fractures occur only after a considerable period of service. A fatigue fracture can be easily recognized from the appearance of a smooth and polished surface that corresponds to slow growth of crack. During the crack propagation step, characteristic pattern of concentric rings spread over the smooth region of fractured surface. These concentric rings are known as beach marks or striations. Beach marks or striations are lines or curves radiating outward from the 
point of initiation of the failure. So, brittle fracture surface mainly so flat and spiny surface, chevron and hackle pattern. Fatigue brittle fracture so striation. These features are not visible from naked eye, therefore requires optical and electron microscopy. When we look at a flat surface of a pipe or a plate that broke in a brittle manner, V-shaped chevron making pattern can be seen. V-shaped chevron patterns are basically zigzag pattern of crack growth. Cracks usually grow in direction opposite to the orientation of chevron marks. So, chevron marks indicates about direction of crack initiation and direction of crack propagation. Similarly, these feather-like features which is also known as hackles is also characteristic of brittle fracture. Depending on the amount of force applied to the specimen, the rate of crack propagation can be more or less elevated. In case of very high propagation rate, the fracture surface pattern is more complex and a feather-like hackle pattern form. Similarly, formation of river pattern also indicates about the brittle fracture. Fatigue type of brittle fracture can be recognized from the appearance of three distinct features. First, spiny flat initiation area. Second, Flat, dull, smooth area surrounding the sinus region that shows a slight change in surface texture. It is a transition zone from the from slope to fast crack growth. And third is estriation. This area is directly related to the type of loading and applied stress on the specimen. Due to cyclic load, beach marks appears radiating outward from the point of initiation of the failure. Like brittle fracture, ductile fracture also appears with distinct features that can be identified easily. The classic example of ductile fracture is a tensile specimen. Ductile fracture provides some warning before failing. Usually the material undergo necking before breaking. The sample starts to fracture due to formation of microvoids in the net region. These microvoids grow in size and begin to join together to produce an internal crack. The final separation of cross section occurs by shear rupture. The fracture has a typical characteristic of cup and cone or fibrous dull appearance. After the necking down, the final rupture produces shear lip which forms the wall of the cup. These cup like depressions at microscopic levels are known as dimples. The dimples form when the microvoids torn apart during the rupture process. Under tensile fracture, dimples are either round or oval depending on the ductility of the material. So, ductile fracture surface mainly produces dull fibrous morphology, dimples on the surface, cup and cone shape. One such example of cup and cone ductile fracture can be seen in case of carbon fiber reinforced epoxy composite where high magnification SEM images of fractured surface of carbon fiber shows formation of cup and cone. That indicates that the composite fractured in ductile manner. Dimple fracture is another feature of ductile fracture. A fracture surface of dimple rupture exhibits tiny cup-like depressions as we can see in SEM image of high density polyethylene fractured sample. Similarly, fibrous dull appearance of tensile fractured specimen of polyethylene also indicates ductile type of fracture. Polyethylene is a ductile material and requires high energy to break the specimen Therefore, SEM image of polyethylene specimen shows fibrous morphology due to stretching of material and indicating that material failed in ductile manner.
So we can see that using fractography, we can identify root cause of material failure. Once we identify it, we can prevent it and improve the quality and service life of the product. That's all for today. If you have any question or suggestion, please comment below. If you like our video, please subscribe to our channel Polymer World. Thank you.